Hello and welcome to episode 3 in our series on information theory. Today, we will extend the subject of the previous episode to a case where there are multiple random events happening. And we will introduce new properties, joint entropy, conditional entropy and mutual information. Remember our example with picking a ball from a set of balls of different colors that we introduced in the previous episode? We can expand on it, where now, instead of just balls, there are different shapes. You can think of an outcome of picking from our bag as two events. One is picking a specific color, and the other one is picking a specific shape. Firstly, let's take a look at what happens to our equation for entropy, now that there are two events in play. It might look complex at first, but let's write it out and see what we come to. We take the probability of a single event. Let's say it's picking a red square. And now we multiply it by the logarithm of the sum of all probabilities of picking a red shape. We then do it for the rest of the red shapes and we sum the results. And we continue doing this for the green, yellow and blue shapes. I've purposely did all of the calculations by color so that the more alert viewers might notice that this is exactly the same formula as when we did it for one event only. Except now we just know that there are two possible events. We can do the same thing if you want to calculate the entropy of picking a specific shape. Let's now introduce the concept of a joint entropy. What it measures is just the entropy of all the possible outcomes for both of our events. Think about it as treating all of the events as one independent event and calculating its entropy. Another new concept is that of a conditional entropy. It calculates the uncertainty of one of our events given that we know the outcome of the other one. Let's say we want to calculate the uncertainty of a color when we know what shape an object is. To do that, we take the probability of an outcome being a specific color and shape and we multiply it by a logarithm of the probability of it being a certain color when we know its shape. And we do that for all of the possible shapes of that color and for all of the possible colors. The last new concept that we will introduce today is that of mutual information. What it tells us is how much information is shared between both of our events. You can think about it this way. Just as one bit of information cuts down the space of possible events in half, one bit of mutual information means that knowing the outcome of one event cuts down the space of possible events for the other one in half. There are also a few very important dependencies between the formulas for entropy. Joint entropy is always lesser or equal to the sum of individual entropies for both events. It is also equal to the uncertainty of one event increased by the uncertainty of the second one given that we know the first. Entropy of one of the events is always greater than or equal to the entropy of that event given that we know the other one. Mutual information is how much our uncertainty of an event decreases when we find out the outcome of the other one. It is also equal to the cumulative uncertainty of both events individually, reduced by the joint entropy. This also has a nice visual representation that might help you get an intuitive feeling for the relation between entropies. Right now, I'm going to show you two special cases to further improve your intuition. But before that, I encourage you to pause the video and think about when will joint entropy be exactly equal to the sum of individual entropies? And when will entropy of one of the events be exactly equal to the conditional entropy of that event given the second one? The first special case is when both events have a deterministic relationship. 
Nick that knowing one event tells us everything about the other. In this case, conditional entropy is equal to zero because there is no uncertainty about the event if we know the outcome of the second one. Mutual information is equal to the entropies of the other variables since knowing one event tells us everything about the other one. The second special case is when both events are independent, meaning that knowing one event tells us nothing about the other. This is exactly the case that I encouraged you to think about earlier. There is no mutual information, since knowing the color does not reduce the probabilities of shapes. Conditional entropy is equal to the entropy of an event, since knowing one event is not reducing our uncertainty. And joint entropy is equal to the sum of individual entropies. We have come to the end of the second episode. This was a lot of information to parse, but hopefully you now have an intuitive feeling of multiple event entropy. If you want to test yourself even further, I encourage you to think about, or perhaps even write out on paper, the exact outcomes of all of the entropies for our two special cases.